Hey guys, all right, so I've been somebody who's been lucky enough to have designed my career to have total geographical mobility. Here we are in a, my home away from home and my office away from home. This is a uh, 1,500 square foot condominium uh, outside of Tampa. You can see right out the window here in the master bedroom, large master, the Gulf of Mexico. I'm gonna go ahead and just give you guys a quick tour. This property is currently listed. I bought it last December for 640,000 and it is currently on the market for 759K. You can see we've got a full bathroom in here, stackable washer dryer, nice size walk-in closet here. And this property is being sold furnished and decorated. Many of you may not know that decorating is uh, another small pastime of mine. We've got a spare second bedroom here. It is a two bedroom, two full bath. There is actually a shower back in this spare bathroom. And then the entryway, formal living and dining. I confess to be a, being a restoration hardware junkie uh, word of caution, do not walk into that store. So we've been having some really great luck with open houses. And over the past couple of weeks, we've done a number of those. We've got a ton of interested buyers. And just like that, this property should allow me to scoop up about $110,000 in proceeds. Now that's before the cost of selling. Because of the networking I've done here in Florida while I'm here for work, I'm gonna sit outside and talk with you guys. And actually, before I do, take a look at this view can see the intercoastal here. There's downtown Clearwater. You can see the Gulf over here. And we're just steps away from the beach. It is a, a great place to, to both live and work, but um, there's a number of reasons that I'm actually parting with this. And, uh, and you know, uh, today I really just wanted to kind of understand a little bit more clearly how this, this work from home revolution is really affecting things um, you know is it a good thing is it a threat to cities um, that's what we're going to analyze in today's video is the remote work from home revolution a threat in any way to american cities you know because many people have enjoyed the flexibility and the convenience of working from home it's important to also consider, of course, the impact that it's had on the surrounding cities and their economies too. So in today's video, what I wanna do is explore the financial challenges that cities are facing as a result of working remotely and what they that may mean for the housing market in 2023 and beyond. So if you're interested in learning more about the unintended consequences of remote work, make sure you stick around through the end of this video. As we all know, the, the pandemic has led to a significant shift towards remote work, and many Americans are now working from home. However, this trend has really not been without its challenges, particularly for American cities. According to a recent analysis of the, of the Census Bureau data, 29% of Americans were working from home in October of 2022. In New York City, financial firms reported that only 56% of their employees were in the office on a typical day in September. While the number of people working from home full time has decreased since the peak of the pandemic, uh, flexible work arrangements now in which employees are really able to work from the office just a few days a week have really become more common. I hear it all the time in my coaching sessions. A recent study that the National Bureau of Economic Research did estimates that 30% of all full-time workdays will be performed remotely by the end of 2022. And this shift towards remote work has had a significant impact on major cities in the United States. Uh, there's a decrease in, in foot traffic in central business districts and a drop in tax revenues. Mobile phone data shows that foot traffic in these areas is down significantly compared to 2019. And this trend is reflected in the occupancy rates of offices which have fallen to around 47% now. The trend towards remote work has also led to a decrease in demand for commercial real estate, as you might imagine, and it's resulting in a drop of property values. There's actually a study from um, New York University Stern School of Business that found that office values fell 45% in 2020, and they're expected to remain 39% below pre-pandemic levels for the foreseeable future at this point. If this projection is accurate, it could end up resulting in a loss of $453 billion in property values for American cities, impacting municipal 
revenues. The trend towards remote work has had an especially significant impact on New York City, where property taxes are the largest source of public funds, providing one third of the city's tax revenue, with office buildings accounting for actually one fifth of that sum. The declining market value of Manhattan's major office district has resulted in a loss of 5.24 billion in revenue for the city. Remote work has also had a negative impact on small businesses in urban areas, as commuters are now able to work from their homes a few days a week, resulting in lunch orders, after work drinks, and other transactions. And this has led to a decline in, in sales tax revenues with cities across the United States. And they're expecting a 2.5% decrease in 2022, according to a survey by the National League of Cities. New York City controller Scott Stringer estimates that remote work will cost the city $111 million in sales tax receipts annually. Unbelievable. And the shift towards remote work has also had an impact on mass transit systems too in cities where ridership remains at around 70% of pre-pandemic levels. And that poses a significant threat to municipalities' transit systems. And they were already struggling to operate on a budget before the pandemic. In New York, the Metropolitan Transit Authority is facing a widening gap now between its revenues and operating expenses in the coming years. And um, the decreasing revenues and declining quality of public services in cities like unreliable mass transit, lower performing public schools, and so forth, it may make cities less attractive to high earners who, who really just might choose to move to the suburbs. So this could further depress revenues and lead to an increase in underpopulated office towers. Additionally, underpopulated downtown areas may become more conducive to crime or less attractive to small businesses and that might lead to a further decline in the population and economic activity in those areas also. Now, as you can see, of course, with all of this information, there's a lot of issues that could very well spike due to the work from home trend. It is possible that remote work will become less popular as the effect of the pandemic continues to wane, but given the benefits it offers to both employees and companies, cities would not be wise to rely on this outcome. Instead, they could and maybe should take advantage of the current downturn in the commercial real estate market to create additional housing in already structured, centrally located buildings. Cities in the United States have long struggled with a, a housing crisis with high demand and very limited supply, resulting in unaffordable prices, transferring then, of course, wealth from workers to landlords and displacement of long-term residents, really gentrifying the areas. We've all seen it. One potential solution is to, is to convert vacant office buildings into housing, which are typically located in areas zoned for both residential and commercial. And they're already built, you know, reducing community opposition, of course. These buildings may also be attractive to urban residents that, that wanna be able to walk to work and have access to amenities. However, converting office buildings into housing, it can be expensive. They do tend to have fewer bathrooms and kitchens may not meet all the standards required for residential. Additionally, they may not comply with the parking minimums, always an issue in cities. The high costs and regulatory challenges of converting office buildings into housing have, have deferred many real estate developers who are in, instead now opting for lower revenues from their commercial properties while hoping that remote work will not continue for the long term. However, converting these buildings into housing could provide significant benefits to cities, including easing housing shortages, increasing downtown commerce and property values, and then increasing tax revenues. To encourage these types of conversions, there's city and state policymakers who might begin reducing funding and, and regulatory barriers. Cities like New York or Los Angeles, they've previously offered regulatory exemptions for conversion projects, and they've seen success in trading stringent standards for more housing units. In fact, the benefit of these conversions are so significant that cities may consider exempting them from the requirement that all bedrooms have windows. Converting office buildings into residential towers can be challenging, requiring the creation of unusual floor plans to accommodate the deep core to window depths of modern offices. Real estate developer Bobby Fission he, he recently demonstrated on Twitter how a typical office can be transformed into a spacious but really unusual home with a large common area and four windowless bedrooms. Obviously not everybody wants to live in a 2,500 square foot apartment. Um, 
with that type of a layout, and there are certainly people who, who would appreciate the quiet and the darkness of, of a windowless bedroom. Um, but as, sin, as city officials do consider the potential for office to residential conversions to address housing shortages and the negative impact of the remote work on, da, on downtown areas, and of course the finances involved with that, they may consider relaxing zoning requirements and offer funding and regulatory exemptions to encourage these kind of projects to take place. And by doing so, they can turn the work from home trend into a positive development for cities and their residents. Now, the, the interesting thing here is what this will do for the real estate market in these areas. We all know that uh, the ways that supply and demand affect housing prices are affecting things now. So this is certainly something worth keeping an eye on. What do you guys think of the potential solution to the, to the issues caused um, by the remote work in major metropolitan areas. Would you live in an apartment like the conversions we've been discussing here? Make sure you let us know in the comments below what your preference would be, uh, or are you really looking for more of a conventional type of residential living situation? Uh, obviously, the one behind me is a residential unit built in 1974. It's a dated building. Uh, our, mine was, was remodeled in 2020, and hopefully with this a uh, quick exit, there will be some significant meat on the bones still with that, which just goes to show you that even at the peak of where we were coming in with the most recent um, uh, red hot real estate market, um, there were still ways to get in and make money. Guys, this should just show you that you always need to be thinking of what you could be doing next. Uh, at no point should we really just be sitting around doing nothing. If we're sitting around waiting for opportunity to come up, that's a great time to be continuing, continuing our research. And this is a wonderful channel to do it on. So if you're not yet a subscriber, consider subscribing, drop your comments below, stay plugged into the conversations, and hopefully uh, we'll continue to, to, to find and uncover new ways that you guys can capitalize on this ever-changing economy. We sure appreciate you being here today. And until I see ya, until I see ya on the next video, make it a great one and most importantly, keep on cash flowing, friend. See you soon.